Oh, no, no, no. No, it's a different one. Hello, Miss Bobby. Hello, is this me? I don't know. I think it is. We're on TV. Thank you. Oh, we are already. Okay. She picked up pastel and started boiling the All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're starting the meeting. It is 6.30 on the 20th of April, 420, a number that has some significance for some people. Uh, here we are at the Arts Commission, and we will start off with the roll call, if you would please, James or Amber, one or the other of you. Okay. Commissioner Balderman? Here. Chair Addison? Here. Vice Chair Harmon? Here. Uh, Commissioner Golden? Here. Commissioner Byrne? Here. Commissioner Crowner? Here. And Marcy, Commissioner Tosher was not present at the time of the roll call. Okay, we will go forward with the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Ms. Golden, would you lead the... Was that Ms. Golden, as you said? That's what I said, yeah. Ms. Golden. Ms. Golden. <laughs> Thank you. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have two people who would like to speak to us this evening in the public comment section, and Jerry Michaels was here first, so Jerry, if you would take the podium and introduce yourself and go forward, please. Hi, my name is Jerry Michaels, and I'm an Ojai resident. Um, I was visiting uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming a few years ago, and I went by an art gallery that had quite a few bronzes out front, and I started thinking about the 100th anniversary of Libby creating Ojai, and I started thinking about a bronze might be a good idea. Then I kind of threw the idea away because I thought we're not that kind of a community and I could, couldn't imagine a single bronze statue in the park. <laughs> but as I traveled around, I started seeing uh, benches with people on benches. And then I saw a bench with two people on it. And I started realizing that maybe there was a concept that would work for honoring Libby on the 100th anniversary. And through this concept, I kept doing more research and I came up with Richard Requa of Mead and Requa as the architect that did the downtown uh, in 1917-16. So I found a couple of images that conveyed Libby sitting with Requa. And at one time, I think I talked to David Mason, who said that when Libby was here visiting Sinclair, him and Requa, or him and Sinclair, were sitting at a park bench by the post office looking out at the defunct city, wondering what they could do with it. So it all kind of came to me that a park bench, an architect, and Libby, the philanthropist, might be a good idea for us to consider putting in, in the town as an honor for his commitment and a hundred celebration. So I didn't get around to doing this. I had the file for the last three years. And then I found out Michael was the uh, chair, so I had a conversation with him a week or so, or so ago and said, because you know, I've known Michael for a while, and I said, what do you think? He said, well, come present it to the commission, see what happens. So I'm here to see if I can pass a torch. And I know it's, Michael and I have talked, it's an expensive project. It's two life-size bronzes. And we're probably talking two to three hundred thousand dollars to get it done, but it's Ohio. Libby deserves it. We have a lot of philanthropists that have taken over his position since he's left, and I think we could get it done. Like Michael and I talked about, there's no sense in it being done in next year or this year. I mean, it could take five years. I was involved with the uh, originally involved with the uh, the uh, Ohio. Uh, Defense Fund, and that is now over $700,000 in the Ohio Defense Fund, and we started out with zero about seven years ago. So I know that there's a lot of philanthropists that would get involved. I know that you also have money, and the city has money. So it's just a concept that I'm not keeping to myself anymore, and I'm throwing it out to people who are in the position to decide whether this is a good idea or not. So let me show you a few things that I have. Can I pass these around? Yeah. So I came up with this one, which is Churchill. You want to go back to the mic? Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to pass these. Want me to pass them for you? Yeah. Jerry? Would you someone yeah. pass them for me? Okay. So this is this is a, a the the bench that started at. Let me just give you a few of these. 
This is the concept that started out the, the, or this is the image that started out the concept of putting the two of them together. And then I found, I won't bore you with all this. You want to pass this out? I could use you for just a minute. Then I found this image, which I thought conveyed the ability to use that as the architect for Requa. It's got a period look to it. I still need you. <laughs> Can you stay here for a minute? Um, this is this is Libby and his and a little more of his youth and prime that I thought would be a good image for the statue. And then this is Requa in his prime. This is where the statue would go. As you walk through the pillars, just past the uh, fountain, and if you go left of the bandstand or you go right to the bowl, someone's already put a, a in the past, someone's already put a rock wall there that's perfect for a bench to go right in front of it. So it'd be right as you enter, everybody going into the park, either no matter what event they're going to, the music festival or whatever, they're gonna walk right by it. They have to, because it's right at the center. So that seemed like a perfect opportunity when I started searching that. So this is Winston Churchill with a cigar and the Requa image transposed onto a bench which gives you the closest idea of what the finished statue would look like. My concept on this is that, that it, it shows artistic creation, the creation of architecture by an architect. It shows communication and collaboration, peers and friends working together for the greater good instead of just a static statue. It shows philanthropy, Libby spending his money to make this town better. It shows the artistic commitment, commitment and process with Requa actually working on a drawing and actually making motion. And then there's pride in both the men and their clothes and their posture. And I think that, you know, it goes with the park ground, it goes with the young children, seeing, seeing that image as something that we've chose to represent our city and our park. Uh, I think the statue itself conveys Ojai history. It, appreciate, it, it uh, conveys our thanks, appreciation, and honors the philanthrop philanthropist resident and his chosen architect, who Requa, as you all know, became very successful in a lot of areas. Balboa Park being one of them. And as I said before, it's a welcoming to all who attend Libby Bowl, the tennis tournament, the music festival, the bandstand, the playground. The other thing is, uh, that might be a side note, is that it, it creates human form in the park after night, which I think would be just a, a, a bonus, is that the park is dark. We know that you know, there, there's reason to try to keep it safe, and I think that's, that even though it's a bronze statue, I think it, it gives a presence of something in the park that would uh, help protect the park. So that's my torch I've lit. <laughs> and uh, I'll wait for further uh, input from Michael. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. Jerry, thank you very much. Thank it's you. it's a yes, very interesting idea. And the, the oh, process here. now is that it will go to the Public Art Committee and they will discuss it as an idea and try and get some estimate of costs and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. And then it will eventually work its way to the full commission. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to be involved with the funding if it comes to that and trying to help raise money for it as we move on. I don't see it as something that's going to be done right away because I know the amount of money is not there. But, uh, but I think we could raise it. And if we just look at it as a project that needs to be done in five years or ten years, um, there's no hurry. So I'd like to show you one last thing. I had Leslie Clark just do me a quick little watercolor of what it would look like, uh, a concept of what it would look like when it was done. So I'd like to pass this around. You told me you did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I begged Leslie, but I've given enough money to her African Foundation that I was able to. <laughs> I'm going to hold this up so that the folks at home on watching this on TV can see that it would incorporate the plaque that is already there on the wall so it would really enlarge the the impact of, of what's and, and there's a question as to whether there would be you just build a rock bench in front of that or put a regular bench in i think a regular bench uh, is more casual because i'm trying to keep a bronze casual mm -hmm. and i think the image and the and the face 
the, the way the faces relate to each other would become important too as well. This helps. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. We really appreciate, Thank you. The, appreciate the, the idea and we will take it forward and we'll stay in touch. Okay. I'll be happy to take it on behalf of the Public Art Committee. <laughs> Good. You know, no, seriously. Well, well, yeah. Well, no, you don't have to. No, no, I, just, I, I just don't know, how, I don't know what Leslie wants me to do with it. It's a selling point. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. yeah let's do Good. It. That's fine. Thank you. Good Thank you to Leslie. Thanks, Sue. All right, thanks, everybody. Okay, thanks, Jerry. And now we have Len Claif is going to address the commission as a member of the public. Good evening, everybody. Leonard Clay, 412 North Fulton Street. Uh, I'm here as a representative of the Ohio Art Center. Uh, let you know what's coming up in the next month. Uh, we have a lot of exciting things coming up. On Sunday, April 30th, from 1 to 4, we have our fourth great art theft. Um, 75 or so local artists have contributed a piece of their art. We sell 75 tickets at $75 a piece. We put the tickets in the drum and pull names out one at a time, and when your name is called, you get to pick up your piece of art. Um, so people get to buy a, a steal, a great piece of art, for only $75, and the Art Center makes a bunch of money, and it's a really fun afternoon. Um, Terry Mettler, our executive director, has a couple of drinks before she starts the festivities, <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's great fun. Uh, so that's Sunday, April 30th from 1 to 4. Um, you, you can see the art that is available at the Art Center during our regular hours, which is uh, noon to 4 uh, every day but Monday. And everything that's hanging on the wall or is in the display cases will be available as part of the art theft. Um, then on Saturday, May 6th, in the afternoon, we have two events at the same time. Um, it's a busy place, the Art Center. Uh, from 1 to 3, Commissioner Harmon will be having her opening reception. She is the featured artist in the uh, Art Center Gallery that month. Um, so come on down from 1 to 3, see Linda's beautiful uh, abstract oils. And she's waving to me. Um, <laughs> that same afternoon at 2 o'clock in the theater, the off-the-wall, off-the-page players uh, will have their work performed. This is a part of the youth branch at the Art Center. Uh, the work has been written by area elementary students. Um, it's, it's the, they write whatever they feel like writing, and then members of the theater branch put that into one act, little one act plays and perform the pieces. Um, and it's a great way to get the kids involved um, in, in, in theater, um, in writing, um, and they're fun. Uh, we have very talented kids in Ojai and very talented people at the Art Center Theater Branch who uh, translate their work. So this will be the third event uh, for the off-the-page players, and everybody's invited. I think we asked for a $5 donation, um, and that's from at 2 o'clock in the theater on May 6th. Then on May 7th is our first Brunch and Blues. Uh, we go from 11 till 6 out on the back patio, um, $25 admission, blues all day. Uh, great event to come to after Eric Burton at the Bowl the night before. Um, so come on down for that. Um, on May 12th, uh, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee opens. Uh, that runs four weeks. We have four shows each weekend. Friday and Saturday nights at 7.30, matinees Saturday and Sunday at 2. Um, this was uh, um, won at, at least, I think, two, two Tonys and was nominated for a Grammy uh, when it opened on Broadway back in 2005. Um, it's about the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. There are two special features in this show. Uh, first is that at each performance, four volunteers from the audience will be selected to participate in the spelling bee. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, get to the theater a little early and fill out an application. And we don't feed you the, the answers. I mean, you're on your own up there. Um, the other feature of this play is that um, one, of the, one of the characters in the spelling bee prays for help in, in being able to figure out a word, and Jesus makes a one-page appearance. Um, 
Each performance will feature a different Ojai performer as Jesus. Um, I have opening night, um, so if you want to see me play Jesus, uh, that would be on uh, uh, May 12th. Uh, Buddy Wilds will be doing it uh, one night, uh, Doug Friedlander and a bunch of other uh, art center regulars. It'll be a fun show. And then the, uh, the last thing uh, coming up at the Art Center for in, in May is Art in the Park. It's our 30th annual Art in the Park. Uh, it'll be somewhere between 75 and 85 artists um, at Libby Park. Uh, event is free and open to the public. That's two days during Memorial Day weekend, May 27th and 28th. And it's always a wonderful, uh, wonderful, fun event. And so you should come on down for that. And I think that's it. Thank you very much, Lynn. Thank you. Really appreciate your keeping us and our viewers posted on Indeed. these events. Indeed. Hello, everybody at home. The Art Center, for those who don't know, is at 113 South Montgomery Street, <laughs> right across the street yeah. from the Ojai Cafe Emporium. <laughs> Get the hook. In beautiful downtown Ojai. Get the hook. <laughs> <laughs> Night, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, uh, we will now move into the rest of the agenda, but I'd like to first of all ask James, our new liaison, to introduce himself and give us a little bit of background on who you are. And we're welcoming so anxious you for to the demonstration. join us, and we're going to miss Amber, but at the same time, we appreciate that this will strengthen the operations in general. So welcome, and... Say hello. I want to introduce him too. Okay, you do we, it. James came to us from the city of Oxnard um, at the end of March, and we're all just very, very thrilled to have him with us in the city manager's office. He's now filling the position of the assistant to the city manager, and he's already proven himself a huge asset for the city, and I know he's going to be just a great fit for you guys. Thank you, Amber, and uh, thank you, Commission. I. Um, I'm looking forward to working with you. I do have uh, good news because I know uh, people aren't, um, people don't want to see Amber leave either. So Amber's <laughs> graciously offered to uh, to help ease the transition and work with us over the next couple of uh, months too. I, I think I added an extra month there without asking, but. Um, <laughs> That's good. You're smooth. I like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I'm looking forward to working with you all. I've uh, spoken with uh, some of you. I actually, I think most of you at this point, and uh, just want to commend you on how much work you guys do and uh, how much good you do for the the city of Ojai. And I'm excited to be part of that now. So, thank you. Well, thanks for being here. Glad to have you with us. All right, let's move forward. We have a cloud-based storage demonstration. We are entering the 21st century again. So what we have for you tonight is um, we're very fortunate in that our, um, our IT department had the brilliant idea back when we were setting up the Arts website, Arts Commission website to, um, to get a business account for the Arts Commission. And cloud, as we talked about at the last meeting, cloud-based storage is really something that can serve everybody really well and promote the longevity of the important work that all of you commissioners do going into the future. So this is how it works. You go to google.com, as I hope everybody's familiar with. Um, the sign-in button's in the top right-hand corner. This is probably old hat for a lot of people who already have Google accounts. If you don't have a Google account, it might look a little new and different. Um, this is my account and then you go up here to the grid menu or I'm sure there's a more technical term and then you'll go into your Google Drive from there Every, if you have a Google account you'll everybody has a Google Drive it comes with your account it's free if you don't have a Google account contact James or I and we will work with our IT department to get one set up for you and once you have your Google account, um, we'll work to share the Arts Commission folder with you. So it's been shared with me. I don't own it. Um, so it's Arts Commission documents. And here you can see that Commissioner Byrne has already set up a bunch of folders that are already ready to have items put into them. Some of them already have items in them. That one does not. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... Um, Oh yeah, that's perfect. So here's where Commissioner Harmon has already put in all of the items that have 
that were came up in acquisitions during those years. And then as far as getting items from your computer into the Google Drive, it's fairly straightforward and simple. I put a couple of um, just kind of test documents in my, my other cloud storage so that I can move it into this cloud storage. <laughs> um, so here we have. I do have an admin folder so we can put agendas in. Oh, perfect. Good. And all and the whole packets can go in. So here's my in my here's something that I own. You can move things o over for a you can move a whole folder at a time. Sorry. Just drag. Just drop and you just drag. drag and drop them right yeah. in. Or you can do individual documents and it'll take a couple of minutes and then they're in there. And yes, ma'am. I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't know if I missed Will you something. use your microphone, though? Oh. Thank you. Did I miss something on how do we get to the Art Commission part of Google Drive? Yes, you did, but I can take you back there. Good okay. question. She, everybody did get an invitation, by the way. Great. Right. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Got an invitation. I sent an email mm -hmm. to all of you. A lot, yes, it was a while ago. Oh, yeah. dear. <laughs> yeah. Just search, search your email. So when you get into your own Google Drive, once you've accept, accepted the invitation, which we can set up meetings with you too when you can come in and, ex and we can walk you through how to accept an invitation. I can do it um, you'll go into your own personal Google Drive and then go to your shared with me folders. And then it'll be listed there under Arts Commission documents. So, so it might look something that looks more like this. Yes, that's mine. Yeah. So this is tile view, and this is very simply list view. They have two modes for how your brain works and the type of data that you're storing. And so um, that's pretty, it's, it's as simple as that. And then once you um, are working on things, if you have a working document, everybody can work on them. It records who does what. So if you had a document that you were all kind of working on together, you can get on there and each person can make whatever reviews or changes they want and it'll show who worked on it when and what happened and it's um it can be a really nice tool um so does anybody have any questions questions of course i wouldn't disappoint yes <laughs> so are you I on your microphone oh. sorry Cheers. do i have to have icloud in order to do this no. on my computer do no you do not have to have iCloud? iCloud I do not no okay this um, is this is done through Google and I believe your email account is not a Google account so we'll need to get you set up with a Google account the nice thing is is that you don't have to have a Gmail email address to have a Google account I use my city email address for my Google account well, so if, it's not I, one more thing if one have has to iCloud on their computer, do you still need that Google account? Yes. Yes. Regardless, yes. you've got to have two a different account, clouds, no matter what. Yes, iCloud, okay. iCloud is private storage. This is public. public storage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you put in a document and lock it so that it cannot be written on? Yes. Okay. Uh, when you're sharing something, we're working on a shared document. Who? How do you know when it's finished and locked? I mean, who and who makes that decision if it's shared? I don't quite understand sharing. Whoever the point person for the document is. Oh. So if it's um, let's for a hypothetical, your work, you the um, the public relations committee yeah. is working on a That's press good. release. So I would the chair I would imagine would be the person or the chair's designee. Yeah. Would be the person who I would think. put the final and do the final works on it, and then it would go to your staff liaison. When when um, the, one signs up for the Google account, do they allow you to disallow uh, selling your private information all over? Because I've heard that Google sells your information all over, which is why I don't have an account. That's a good question. I've, I'll, can we can we like get around? Will you that? make a note, James? A, I'm I'm not sure about that, but I will say that with um, Google, mm -hmm. my spam is a hundred times less than other emails so I don't know if that's just a rumor so, well, can I say something? it's good to hear these are public documents by the way though so it's not like we're sharing anything that's not like over the yeah, this is all public these are documents we want to have public and we want to have a, a history and, kept. As, and as far as the the settings on the individual documents like let's say you know you're not the Commission's not ready to release something you can always always 
change the change the um, public settings by going to share and then it's anyone with the link can edit it um, only like only specific people can access it like every every document that you access on the city website is housed in Google documents and we just we put the share settings that anybody on the internet can find it so you don't have to have a Google Drive account to be able to access those documents that are available to the World Wide Web. You can make it so that only you, Commissioner Golden, can see that specific document. Mm -hmm. There's shared there's sharing settings as far as the documents themselves are concerned. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's yes. And, and as far as not wanting anybody to change it, you could always put it in as a PDF, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then nobody could. So this is live. Okay, well, this I think is an advance, and I think it's going to make communication within the commission superior to what it is now. It will also potentially reduce the amount of paper that's being generated, and I think allow for really quick and easy communication. So, you won't have to questions, please address Amber or James uh, or Christine Byrne, all of whom are expert and are happy to help. I have a question already. Linda. When you're dragging the uh, document over, does that leave a copy on your um, computer or does it actually move there away from you? Because I wasn't sure about that because I, I didn't really double check Great that. Question. That is a good question. I believe there's two options. There's share and then there's send to. I believe when you send, you can send a copy or you can send the actual document. So when I'm dragging and dro dropping, what am I doing? You're copying. Okay. You're making a copy of that. Okay. So. Um, and then if I want to do it the other way, I would do the sun too. Yeah, okay. you know, I'm not entirely sure though. Let's let's play for a second. Let's look. Because sometimes I do want to get it off my computer. <laughs> right. <laughs> like large JPEGs, you don't want to. Well, you could probably delete it when you're but, done moving it. Well, I could, but it'd be easier to do it this way if yeah. it has an option. So let's see. I know Dropbox it moves it, which is kind of a pain sometimes. It is a pain sometimes. Mm -hmm. I agree. Amber, I can tell you've done this before. <laughs> okay, well, let uh, Amber work on this, I'll work and on that. you can clarify this okay. at our next meeting. I can meeting always check it too. I'll, I'll pop around. Okay. Thank you, Amber. Thank you very much. This is a, a good step forward. Very, very important. All right, we're going to move to the next item on the agenda, which is to and welcome Ms. Tosher. Uh, is to determine whether or not, and this is an action item, whether or not we wish to move to action, ag action minutes. And Amber or James, would one of you care to explain to the group what that would mean? So James is handing out for you right now a copy of um, an example of what the action minutes could look like for you to take a look at and, um, and experience them. Thanks. The, the benefit to doing minutes this way is that it's, it's, it captures the official motions that were made at the meeting while, and is a kind of a medium ground but between being able to capture the communication that happened and not spending four to six hours per meeting yeah. translating the conversation. So if you are looking at the minutes, you can see next to each item there's the there's the time signature on the on the YouTube video for when the item was started, and then when next to the motion, there's a time stamp for what at what time during the YouTube video the motion was started. Sometimes a motion will be made, and there will be c communication after the initial um, motion. But that way, you're able to um, not spend so much time searching through the video, but identifying the conversation and then the official action. Yeah. I think the combination of this mode of minutes coupled with the YouTube videos means that there is a complete record accessible. Right. I, I actually think it's preferable to the other kind yeah, because it is short. Yeah. And, and if we want more, more information, we can go to it. So I think it's perfect. Thank you. Any other discussion on this? Well, I, I want to, yeah, I want to just say that what I like about it is, is that with the other minutes, there were, we also had to go back in and correct. Oh, I didn't really say that. I said this. And this way, right. you don't ever have to do that either. So I, this is brilliant. That's good. That's good. Stuart. Yes, I'm the newbie here, along with Marcy. Uh, I have never seen minutes before, so I don't know why I would pre 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 prefer this. I, I, am, am I supposed to get minutes after? No. You no. 
You haven't so been. Minutes. I've never gotten a meal. You've never got it. Well, so why, why do we care? Part of the, so the reason that the city, that the Arts Commission and the Parks and Recreation Commission and at sometimes the City Council have been behind in minutes is that we've had a lot of turnover in the records manager office who typically takes on that responsibility and role. And over the past year, we've had one, two, three, four different people in that office. So, um, so this is a way for us as staff to be able to get caught up yeah. and have a nice record for you. It's not so much for us, it's for you. It's for both. It's for both because this way you always, one, it makes the video more accessible and you're not relying on staff's interpretation of what was oh. said during the meeting okay. um, on one hand. And two, because it's, it's so much simpler to generate, it's easier for us to, to turn them around so you cons consistently have. I see current minutes it's like a narrative in the past yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah bullets yeah and just just to add Good. thank you to to add to that so um if you aren't familiar with with minutes you know as public meetings were required to provide minutes of those meetings there's summary minutes there's action minutes and summary minutes are more you know exactly what it says a summary of the discussion that took place and the motions and all those things and the action minutes are just the actual actions that occurred uh, w which is a lot of agencies are moving towards that uh, it's a streamlined uh, and like you said with the video available mm -hmm. now those summary minutes aren't really necessary in most situations Linda and I agree with Christine it's really in the long run more accurate and yeah. you don't have to guess what person person was saying you mm -hmm. can watch it on the video mm -hmm. so i think it's great would it would it ever be possible to be able to pull them up at a meeting if we wanted to go back and see what would you know like what the discussion was hmm? cool. can I, see this person? I could do a demonstration for you right now oh <laughs> pick something that i'm not in it <laughs> <laughs> please Oh, no. <laughs> There'll be a slight pause for station identification here. <laughs> and if the public's watching, what we're discussing are the videotaped, um, all these meetings are videotaped, just like James was saying, and they're on YouTube anytime you want to look for them. Or you can go to the city website and look for them also. I'll just for expediency go to the committee assignments at 1307 and cross my fingers that it works. Look at that. I do that at home. <laughs> <laughs> In town, it's important. We passed these out at our last meeting uh, as a a preliminary and so the question is are there any questions or concerns about the so that's an example of being able to if you wanted to have a quick review of what was happened with the lifetime achievement in the arts award yeah. yeah we are happy to pull it up and we can make i have a, a criticism uh david mason saw me the other day and said uh, he watched the last arts commission <laughs> meeting and he said the angle on my face was not good <laughs> And I can see why, because the, the camera's right there. So I think we should move the, no, no. Vanity, vanity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or you and special think, effects. No angle is good on my yeah, face. We, so we need a green one. screen, but we don't have that in the green budget, screen. so. All right. Then uh, I guess I motion to accept action minutes. So move. I was going to say I'd move oh. it, but if you want to move I'll it, move second. it. Oh, okay. okay, I'll move motion it. Motion by second. Linda, second by Christine. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We move on. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. I'm so excited. This is great. Okay. We're moving now to the budget. And this is really just a preliminary. Uh, I asked all of you at our last meeting to give some thought to next year's budget as opposed to this year's budget. And the, the issue is uh, drawing near because Within the next month, Linda and I will be sitting down and sussing out a budget for this coming year. And uh, that is what we will put forward to the council. So 
Let me just go down the line and ask each of you if you have thoughts about what we should request for next year's budget in terms of the areas that you are leading. Uh, Marcy, do you have? She doesn't have any. She you don't chair. have a chair yet. Okay, so you're out. Okay, Bobby. Okay. Um, yes. Oh. As far as the education committee goes, uh, we will have used up our seven thousand dollars for this year, and we'll have a remaining eight hundred that's going to be held over for our graphics person. That combined with the printing of eighty-eight page book, and as opposed to an Commissioner Balderman, are you on your microphone? Yeah, yeah, she is. Oh, would you mind bringing it a little closer? Okay. Down a little bit. <laughs> okay. Ah. Anyway, um, and using an es a printing estimate of an eighty-eight page book, a thousand copies. I will need $9,600, including sales tax for that printing and that 800 overage that we'll have for next year. That the 9,600 includes includes the okay. those two things, those two items. Okay. All right, thank you. Well, thank you for doing the research to give us a solid estimate on that. Um, may I ask one other Please thing? Please do. Um, I, <laughs> somehow I spaced on doing the mentor program budget, and I I'm not sure if that should just stand the same or, and I apologize about that, I got so involved with the printing on this thing that I. I think if we're going to go forward with the mentor program, uh, it would be the same as this okay, year. That so is then to say four mentors funded by the city of Ojai and one funded potentially by the Ojai Education Foundation, which has okay. been our pattern for the five years we've been okay. doing it. All right, uh, Linda, your areas please. Yeah, I've got I have acquisitions in the museum, um, and uh, our committee met and uh, talked it over, and since um, we have done this jo joint program with the museum, right from the beginning we were saying we we're going to have to address the storage issue because we're going to be using their space at the museum. Um, and Wendy and I went over uh, the space, and I think you were there too, Christine mm -hmm. and Bobby, when we went over the space. And we need another rack at the museum to house the um, the rest of the the collection. And um, so Wendy went in and did some research on the price on that. And the rack is going to be, it's a chunk of change, but it is a one-time expenditure, and it will be a permanent piece of the museum. Um, and it's $12,885 for that rack. And that's with installation, freight, and everything. It's a steel rack. It's very, very substantial. And in view of that it's such a large amount, um, we would like to suggest that this year, instead of purchasing new art, we instead put it towards the purchase of this rack so that our what we already have Mm -hmm. is protected um, mm -hmm. properly. That and makes sense. It goes into the future. Mm -hmm. And just so that people know that when you say rack, it's not like a kitchen rack. Oh. It is a steel the size of a sliding. room and it's sliding yes. and work can be placed on both sides. It's, it's, archival. it's archival, yes. And it's, it's part of the system that they already have yes. in place. Oh. So yes. in, in those it's a professional yes. system, there yes. Room. Yes, there's yeah, room. That was, one of, on that was one of the things we researched before we went ahead with the moving the collection. Really no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, um, and I do have the um, quote in case you want a copy of it. Okay. And that was what I was going to suggest right. for my All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Christine, mm -hmm. public art. Okay. Well, and I'm also the invitation. No, Christine Golden. Oh, sorry. First. It's sorry. okay. I don't mind. <laughs> you have to distinguish between the two, two of you. Christine. Christine. Well, people usually call me Chris. Chris. Okay. So. Chris yes. and Christine. Chris and Christine. Okay. That works. And nobody All calls right. me Chris. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they better. Not. For fear of their life. All <laughs> right. Um, our grants, uh, if we can uh, remain at $25,000, I think that'd be absolutely fantastic. I'm sure we'll find a way to spend it on some wonderful grant applications that come in this year. And for public art, um, I don't know how you want to handle the um, $800 misappropriation. Oh. I, know you, I know you and Michael have talked about it or know about yeah. it, yeah. that there was a $800 misappropriation that budget um, the 
Gail Childress painting was charged to public art instead of acquisition. That's so several years we ago. could ask for $1,800 to public art. And then my question to you, Amber and James, would be, can we move that $800 into the public art fund? So if um, upon looking at the public art fund at closer detail, it appears that there is an inappropriate debit for the Gail, for the Little Ranch House yeah. But there's also appears to be some inappropriate um, credits to it, including the Ojai Education Foundation um, check for 750 from 2013. No, that is correct because the um, original um, Ojai uh, Education Committee that Barbara Hirsch began, we raised money for the Public Art Fund at the theater sh when you know the theater was still open. So this. So that's a correct. Um, that's art. That's arts. Um, Arts 21. Art, Art 21 raised that money specifically on the, we were at, we, uh, we asked ahead of time if we could do that, yeah. those donations. Yeah. We were given a green light on that and we put up a thing with a sign on it saying that that would go to the public art fund. So that's correct. Yeah. So Is there another this, one that this particular line item um, says artist student mentor OEF for $750. Where, where are you on it? So I'm looking, look. um, if you go into your packet, item C, page three of eight. Item C, page three of eight. Let me go back to that and look at it. I got you. All right. So what are you looking at? So I'm looking at the um, the credit from November thirteenth of two thousand thirteen. No, that shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. You're right. So um, and so this the donation from the film event was for the public art fund. The city city gallery sale of the Kenneth Wright does that belong in the public art fund? Yeah. Well, yes. Anytime we, anytime an artist sells a painting, and you can look at the contract that the artists get when they exhibit mm -hmm. for us, um, if they sell, a percentage of the sale goes to the public art fund. Yeah. So that's correct. Thank you very so much for the education. Kenneth for Wright is uh, Sony Wright's husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why. Okay. Yeah. Great. And then, um, yeah. so then that would make Let's sense. See. The one from 2010 as well. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you very much for the education for both James and I as well. Yeah. Um, um, well, maybe because of the seven. I don't know. Uh, can Michael and Linda and I work this out in some way and then get back to you guys? Yeah. So Amber and I actually talked about this this morning, and we went through these to try to make sure everything else was accurate. We did have those questions. We talked to finance about um, what some of the options were, but basically the first step is we got to figure out what needs, how much needs to be corrected. Mm -hmm. uh, so it sounds like there's still a little bit that that needs to be fixed. And things that we haven't talked about that I've taken notes on. Okay, so um, yeah, I will definitely work with finance, but we do need to. Okay. Once you well, guys kind of talk. Could it we out. get together because I've written notes here, but instead of putting everybody through it, mm -hmm. I think we just get okay. Great. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. We'll make a meeting. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. 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 Fabulous. Well, I would okay. say that if we can work all that out, that it, uh, we only need money in that fund uh, to pay for plaques, and we don't have an estimate yet on what a plaque is going to cost us, but um, $1,000, I know we have three plaques that we have to do, right. and there will be one that we have to do for cottages, and I don't know um, what's going to happen with one for the museum gates, because... Um, uh, because I just don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll put in a, a budget request. So there could be plaques five for, plaques yeah. that are needed this year, is what I'm trying to say. So that so. should be included, too, in addition to what you said you want to be included? What? <laughs> are you including that the, amount? Yeah, um, the $1,000 is from previous years, but not knowing what any one plaque would cost, I think we use Aswell Trophy. I don't know what their current prices are, but whatever it is, times five, and then, you know. Okay, so we'll make an yeah, estimate. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Is that okay if we figure it yeah, out? Yeah, sure, okay. absolutely. Okay, let's uh, move on to Chris, <laughs> <laughs> public relations. Okay, so public relations. The Public Re Relations Committee doesn't currently have a line item in the budget, and so this would be beginning a new line item. And the, I think the reason we was suggested is possible need for photography and duplication and things of that order. So and for PR, the, yes. I think we need to, again, enter the 21st okay. century. Okay. Um, and the, the website. So right. I've been working on the, the website and um, 
there are a few tools that we do need to make everything function better. Um, so I did you come up with a figure? Yeah. Well, I only came up with a figure for that one thing. Well, I didn't realize there was absolutely no budget. Um, I'm no, sorry, there isn't. I didn't There's never been it. a budget. Yeah. yeah. Um, for public relations, so I think um, at the time, just from my experience doing things like this, I think um, 2,000 is fine. Is would be great, and then next year we'll be able to keep track of expenses and either lower it or um, you know ask for the same amount but okay. I think that'll give us a good ground and then for the invitational gallery um, there was it didn't function that fiscal year so again I don't have an idea if that's too much because we didn't have it um, so I would request if possible to stay the same and um, the next year I'll really be able to give a good estimate if I think that's too much or not enough. Great. So can, can you give us suggestions then, Amber, on the invitational gallery amount? It says... It doesn't have to be right now, but... James and I can pull the, um, pull the history from previous years Great. when it was fully functioning and Great. then provide that to you to base your... Okay. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, okay. I had a Linda. question. Um, on those, that program that we'd be getting, like the aggregate program, do you buy that once a year or is that like once? It's once a year. Okay. So that would be an ongoing expense. That's what's yes, my question. Yes, but it's definitely worth it. It's yeah. definitely worth it. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all very much. And as I said, Linda and I will now be working to craft a budget and write the narrative and stuff like that. And we may be calling on some of you for further information, ideas, et cetera. And what is our deadline on this, Amber? When do we have to have the budget to the city council? Um, staff is requesting that all formal requests be provided to us by May 8th so that we can okay. include them in a comprehensive manner for the finance department to include in the budget predictions as well as for the city council to consider. Okay, that's what we needed to know. Do, right. do we have a total that we're asking for this year compared to last year? Um, I think I totaled it to be 54000 Yeah, it's, it's in the same neighborhood as last year. If, we, it, if we're not asking we're for an acquisitions it. budget but that this was, year. That's but that's like 7000 difference. But there's a big difference of about 7000 So I think we're going to be, closer we're going to be asking for closer to $60,000 this year. 60, okay. 62, I'd say. But we'll, we will massage the numbers, as they say. All right, let's move on. And the next item is uh, the mentor, the artist student mentor program. And Bobby Balderman, what can you tell us? Well, I wish I could tell you. I know. <laughs> we, um, the deadline is May 1st for applications for the students to apply. Unfortunately, we have only received two of which one, she didn't fill in most of the application including the information on how to get a hold of her to tell her she didn't fill it out. Mm -hmm. And so um, this morning I notified all of the schools that I could, uh, again, to remind them that the deadline is looming and that we need to get those applications in. And Kim Hoy apparently has been sending out bulletins. Oh, fabulous. So um, she's going to put it in the bulletin again, but I also sent something to the individual teachers. And I know that, um, thank you, Linda, I saw something on. I was going to tell yeah, you. Yeah, I saw it on Facebook again, and it's been in the paper, so I'm not sure what else we can do to rattle these kids. Yeah. When uh, the first year of the program, uh, we um, split up uh, the schools in the area, and we visited them, the counselors. We made appointments and visited the counselors and explained what the program was and um, got them really excited about it. And then they carried that information forward to the students and to recommend students. Yes. And we oh. had applications. Yeah. I did that. I did. I tried everything I could to you get did them. That? You met with them? And no, they wouldn't. The private schools would not give me the time to meet with You're them. You're kidding. No, they would not. I did go on campus to Nordoff and I attended four, five, six classes that I spoke to. So I actually oh, went wow, right in the wow. classroom and spoke to them. But I really struck, uh, you know, the, the private schools just kept saying, you know, no, uh, just send us the information. And I, 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 I urged them. 
to let me come and speak with them and did you talk to the art teachers at the no no i i'd, I'd end up either at a counselor you know level but not directly to the teachers it was very frustrating. Very I tried. I did, I did um, so post it on Facebook wow. in a bunch of different places, so I'm hoping it helps. I, um, I went to the community news. I went to the events. I went to art resource. I went oh, to, sure. well, thank you. I, I think I posted it in about six or seven and different you did sites. Too. And I posted it a week and or then so I ago shared as it. well. Yeah. So, so it's out there. We've been spreading the word as much as we can. I think. At this juncture, the question I want to raise is, should we extend the deadline? Not today, yes. but as we get close to the 1st of May, I think we send out a, a flash, yes. and should yeah. we extend it tonight? I think Absolutely. so. Today's the 20th. Why not? Extend it to the 15th of May? Yeah, I, th I think that would be Why helpful. Not? Okay, that's what we'll do, and let's put all of our PR resources and... Per perhaps um, let me just there's another idea I don't if you haven't already done it I'm just like the mind is going have you talked to um, Julia Zonick and um, Scott Smith because they work so closely with lots of kids and then oh yes theater as well maybe some of those yeah, kids they all would know apply. about it they do they yeah, all they know about it contact, oh. yeah. Yeah. It's um, disappointing. you know I I haven't Christine really Chris? oh I'm sorry Chris I'm butting in no um, but I I haven't really looked at it, but do you, is the application difficult? No. No? No, it's the same one we've used for five years. Yeah. I mean, all they have to do is read the it's applications really from the mentors and choose the ones that they'd like to work with and write a paragraph. That's about I'll, it. I'll be, I, I would love to be Stephen Edwards' men mentor. Yeah, yeah so I can. I mean, yeah. none of you kids want to <laughs> yeah. apply. Give yeah. Yeah. Um, we open it up to commissioners. <laughs> I don't understand it when it's a free opportunity to work. Oh, and you get, and you I get will paid. say I've been involved with a number money. of community organizations, and this is not. This is um, happening a lot, oh. even with people giving money away. Um, a lot of the young kids just don't apply. That's unbelievable. Do they fill out the application online and submit it online? Yes. yes. Can. Yeah. Yeah. That makes it easy for them. I, I'm wondering if um, it might be more, what if we Instagrammed these kids? <laughs> no, seriously, they're all on Instagram. They're not on Facebook. Mm -hmm. yeah. They do Instagram, yeah. um, and we Instagram them. And what if we said, okay, a representative from the Arts Commission will be at your school between four and six and come in for an interview? But you can't you can't Instagram them unless you have an account. We don't have an account unless we use and our personal account. And you have to know accounts. their account as well. And we have to know their, their account. They have to find the Instagram. We can, we can yeah. advertise it on Instagram, though. I think that's a great idea. I think so too. I have an Instagram account. I'll, yeah. Well, you could do that. You could. Well, Chris, can you work on that then? Just I announced it at city uh, no, council meeting, so good. the public heard it. But I did yeah. not have the date, um, or and I forgot to say the date and like. You know, get, you can. Ha there's an application online, but I actually named all the artists and what they would do yeah. with the. What are, do we have any what access we can to um, the Rex Department oh, database to send out an e-blast? Sophocles. Um, get the information. I can coordinate with James, and I can coordinate with Sophocles to use their email list. Um, Good. And then, in addition to that, I did put out through the city Facebook page that we're receiving mentee applications. Yes. yes. And yes. shared it on the different networks. I saw that. So, okay. Um, and so it we shows can need. Do you need copy from us, Amber, or do you have that? I just have been working with the press release that was provided. Okay. okay. But now with the new May fifteenth, we'll um, do that. It'd be. It would. It is very important. I believe that this year lots of photos are taken. Yes. yes. Difficult to put out all that text without any um, exciting photographs to go yeah. along with right. it. Yep. I did um, send something to VC Reporter, by the way. Um, so, but I haven't picked up the magazine to see if we're in there. But they work. We're working on a story. Good. Um, I do want to just to try to encourage us that there is good news somewhere. Um, <laughs> when I when I when I went to the classrooms, um, I made up a flyer to take with me so that if anybody wanted information, I could hand them something and they had a physical something, That's good. you right, know, so they right. would remember. And I actually ran out of flyers and had to go and, and print some more. So I, at least over work. twenty over twenty students took them. Wow. So 
A lot of kids and I'm are buying their backpacks too. By the way, what? they're Art in the bottom of their backpacks. Oh, I was gonna <laughs> Artists are also procrastinators. Kids are procrastinators. I've been part of online juried shows, and a lot of times you think you're not getting any entries, and then they all come in the day before. So, mm -hmm. you know, it could be they're just. Okay, well, let's, let's uh, well, do I want to add one thing because uh, Chris said something about VC Reporter, and I just want to make sure because there's so many new people here that I think this is still true, that the student must live in the city of Ojai. Yes. Broadly defined valley. in, in the, the Ojai Valley. valley. That, well, that was very strict for us when the program started that we oh, had yeah. to live. They could go to school outside, but they had to live in the city of Ojai. Had to be a resident. Um, I, I do think, though, oh, you're saying they're procrastinating and everything, but we want to make sure this year that they follow through. So we want to make sure we get the right candidates. Yeah. So if they're having trouble motivating themselves to even <coughs> fill out the application, I would, wouldn't think they would be very good yeah. candidates. So Okay, well, we'll we've, we've got our marching orders then, and we've extended the deadline to the 15th of May, and uh, we'll work at it and hope for the best. And for those watching this uh, on video, this is a – astonishing program with an opportunity for high school students who live in the Ojai Valley to engage one-on-one -on -one with a major artist for a minimum of 50 hours during the summer, however the schedule is arranged with the artist and the student. And at the end of that extraordinary experience, the student also gets a $500 scholarship. So those of you who are listening, both of you, please <laughs> spread the word. Yes. All right. Our parents spread the word. We will move on to item E on the agenda, which is the Lifetime Achievement Award. And I remind you to start with that the criteria are that the person must have proven continuous artistic excellence, they must have demonstrated community involvement within the Ojai Valley, they shall have established a high level of recognition in their field, and be a resident within close proximity of the Ojai Valley and may be of any age. I don't think we'll be nominating any 10-year-olds, but uh, we, in <laughs> fact, at our last meeting, nominated three people, and tonight is the night when we make a decision, and the three people who've been nominated by the awards committee are Roger Conrad, a photographer par excellence, longtime member of the Arts Commission, and a uh, member of the photography unit at the Arts Center and a major contributor at the museum. Um, the second nominee is Marty Babeko, who has a long history of community involvement in the Ojai Valley by virtue of having been a principal in an elementary school, I believe. Mm -hmm. But also more recently and very effectively has been the director of musicals at Nordoff High School. And the third person nominated is Karen Lewis, uh, who is a, I think, founding member of OSA, if not a founding member, at least a, a major member of OSA, and I think one could say fairly a, a major force as an artist in this <laughs> community. And those are the nominees. So we are open for discussion. And if anybody would like to make a motion nominating a particular person. I nominate um, Karen Lewis. Is there a second for that nomination? I don't, are we ready to vote now? No, this is oh. a. I these we ha have been nominated, these people. These people have been nominated, but You're now asking. the vote the vote is are, are we to voting? determine who our potential awardee is going to be. Oh. So Chris has nominated Karen Lewis as the Lifetime Achievement Awardee. And is there a second for that nomination? I, I don't understand. Yeah, don't we just have to vote on the three? Yeah, we just have we to have vote. to. We could just vote on the three if you yeah, would prefer yeah. that. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Very yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll do it that way. Um, That's easy. Being awesome. new and speaking on behalf of Stuart, could we just have uh, you know a few sentences? Uh, whoever is, has a particular opinion about one particular uh, artist to to advocate for them so that we, we can idea. make our decision. 
Okay, yeah, let's let's start it. with uh, discussion about the various nominees as people wish. Stuart, you had your hand up first. Yeah, uh, Marty Babeko is one I would vote for. He, uh, as Michael said, has directed musicals, but he's directed 21 musicals <laughs> over 21 years, and a real um, champion of children and the arts, uh, and a tireless. I mean, he does it all himself without a staff of anybody. I mean, it's just amazing. I've worked with him on two shows, not for the Nordoff thing, and he's, he's a force of nature. He's really a magnificent person. He also, his, his PhD is in, um, is in special education, so he has worked in the elementary schools in Ojai in that area as well as being a principal at uh, Miners, Miners Oaks, I think. But he's a magnificent person. Okay, other comments from anybody about the various nominees? Chris? Well, um, Karen Lewis is also a force of nature. She's very involved in the community, the Ojai Arts Center. Um, she's an Ojai studio artist, works tirelessly to share the big believer in the arts in the community. And um, she, she also has a really interesting past, which I think it's good for people to understand. She was a prisoner of war in the Philippines in her youth, and we don't hear too much about that. So um, she's just a, oh, I lucky to have her. And Karen, if you're watching, no, I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be over for donuts. Right. <laughs> All right, well, let's just, we'll work our way around the room. So, Christine, do you have comments? You oh, wish to make? I do, of course. You know, I, I just, how do you choose between yes. these three yeah. stellar people? Yeah. Everything that Roger has done for the commission, it yeah. just wouldn't be what it was without him. Karen Lewis, I agree with Christine. She's a mover and a shaker. She's the one who arranges the, um, um, docent program for the OSA tours. I had the pleasure of being a docent last year, and, and you know, she just gets that whole thing. She's incredible. And then you have Marty Babeko, and I'll tell you, Marty Babeko, he was a little bit of a mentor to me when I moved to Ojai and was principal of the junior high school, and he's just the greatest guy. And when I think of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kids that he's worked with and changed their lives and introduced them to theater and given them an outlet and something to do. It, it's astounding to me. And in addition to that, he's really good at it. I mean, you go, you know, you go and you look at those shows, and I'm like, whoa, I can't believe what he's done. So, I, you know, as hard as it is, I think I would have to put Marty at the top of my list. I really think it is a lifetime with him. And then the other two can we can do next year, <laughs> you know? Okay, Linda? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all excellent. I, I think they're all excellent choices. Um, I, I personally really, Roger Conrad is the behind the scenes guy. He's a, I, you know, I, I don't know what to say except for he's been there 100% of the time in this community for years and years and years. He's worked at the museum, he's worked for the Arts Commission. He was a founder of the annual, the photo club and they have an annual exhibit they launch every year at the Arts Center. And he's been tireless, and uh, he has a he has a strong uh, background as an engineer and architect. He taught at Cal Arts, Cal Arts for years, um, and like I said, he's a behind the scenes guy, so the public maybe doesn't know as much of all the things that he's done. But I think he represents the kind of person that that is behind the scenes, and that those are the kind of people we need too in the arts. So I I kind of feel like I want to vote for Roger. But they're all great. Yeah, I, I confess I am completely torn. Um, I've lived in Ojai for almost seven years now, and I've had the very good fortune of getting to know these three people quite well. I've worked with Roger. Uh, I've seen what Marty Babeko has done and the, the depth of his experience. And of course, Karen Lewis is, she's just such a major force in the arts community here in Ojai. So I frankly, at this point, don't know how I'm gonna vote. Bobby? I'm, little, 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 little. <laughs> I'm kind of in the same place because, you know, my leaning was towards Roderick because I feel like he's like that quiet power that 
nobody seems to talk about. You know, Marty's very, of course, because he's in theater and we all know about Marty and Karen, but, Ro you know, my leanings were towards Roger, but I also know of Marty more than I know about Karen, but, um, and I know how powerful he is in a different way. So I'm totally confused, and I don't know which way I'm going to vote till I vote. No help. Marcy, any thoughts you want to share? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking don't make me the swing vote. <laughs> 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 but thank you all um, for your uh, advocacy for all of these incredibly talented people that we're blessed to have in OI. Yes, we are blessed to have them. So uh, I just I don't know fine. what else to say. Um, I just look at the list of people who have received it, and it's very strongly weighted in the visual arts, painting, um, painting really. Um, and I thought maybe it would be a good idea to have somebody in the theater area. That that's why I agree with you. They're all wonderful, but maybe that's good for and, us to consider. And then Roger would be the behind the scenes too. Right. He's yeah, well, the he's administrator. A artist though too. I mean, look, think of his own work. But he's yeah. a, but, but, but he's. But he's also the support person that does yeah, helps. He's, he's, the museum <laughs> wouldn't get hung. Yeah, without yeah. without Roger. <laughs> Any further comments? Yeah. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go around the room yeah. and uh, how, how have our vote. Say our I will say the names and we'll take votes. Uh, and Amber will keep say, tally. Could, could we just so each say the name that's on the top instead of having to say no to somebody? Because I don't want to say no. We won't be saying no. We'll call each name and then we'll ask for yes votes. Oh, okay. And however many votes gotcha. each person gets is what we'll do. In order to, and James, correct me if I'm out of line. In order to prevent every, because you're all going to want to say yes to all of them. Um, perhaps, oh. perhaps we could take a, um, just each person say the top person on their list, and then we could do whoever comes out on top. Then you can have a motion and a second and a final vote. Oh, that works. We used yeah. to do it that way. I think. Okay, that sense. that's a good idea. Am I? Is that a poor? All right, we're going to go around and find out who's the name on the top of your list. Stuart. Marty Babeko. Chris. Roger Conrad. Christine. Marty Babeko. Marty Babeko. Roger. Oh. Roger. Bobby. Roger. Swing boat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually um, thinking about Marty. Yeah. I say Marty. Jesus. <laughs> 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 Well, I'm going to vote for Roger Conrad. Um, I think his many, many years. Well, anyway, we've said all that we need yeah, to we, say. We, we just, we. I'd just be repeating what what we've said. So, at this point, Roger Conrad has four votes, uh, four top of the lists, and Marty Babeko has three. So, could I hear a motion, please, Bobby? I move that Roger Conrad receive the Lifetime Achievement Award for Second. 2017. Second. Uh, all in favor? Uh, or any, any discussion first, sorry. Is there any further discussion? No? All right. So all in large. favor of Roger Aye. Conrad? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. And this now gets transmitted to the city council. Is that not correct? Oh. Yes. So this will come. It we will we'll do our best to get it on the agenda sorry the agenda for the um may it'll be the may 10th excuse me the may 9th city council meeting it'll go to them for ratification of the not of the recommendation and then we generally try to get the um, recipient in the following meeting which would be the 23rd that's when he would he would find out about he would receive it. That's when he, he would, would receive, receive it. it. Yeah. So it's a it's kind of a three part. You guys make you guys settle on the, the recommendation. recommendation. The recommendation goes to the council for um, ratification and then the presentation hopefully will be the following. Okay. So All what right. was that meeting for the ratification? I May nine. The, the nine, did you say? 
And then when does Roger presentation on the when is Roger told? Oh, presentation. 23rd of May would be the presentation. Okay. And then we could do a piece in the paper. Or yes, paper absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or even before. All right. I would suggest uh, I would suggest not doing any PR until the council yeah. has yes. oh, settled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the night, but before the yeah, 23rd. Yeah, after, right. And is that when Roger is uh, told that he's after the Unless he's watching. After city council? <laughs> yeah, I think I could, I could inform him now that the, we're going to recommend it to okay. the city council. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. That I will Sweet. do. Okay, we will move on in our agenda, and we move now to the public art committee. Christine, please. Yes, thank you, Michael. Um, well, you want to start, Amber? Because you're A, so why don't you do that first? I'll pass these sheets out. I don't think there are enough. There's only two more. So at the last Arts Commission meeting, the question of okay. when a when a project comes onto the list, and I discussed it with the Community Development Department, and the current practice is for a project to come on the list when building plans have been submitted. So oftentimes you'll... Um, You'll hear about projects floating around there in concept review. Most notably, the bowling alley has been in concept review for quite some time. But without building plans, there's really nothing to put on the list. So that's mm -hmm. once those plans have been submitted, that's when the when projects get added. Um, there hasn't been a lot of motion in this area, and so this is here for your re review. If you have any questions, happy to do our best to answer them. I yes, do have a question. Okay. I can't believe you didn't bring this up, but <laughs> if it doesn't come up until, and I understand why that's that way, mm -hmm. but if it doesn't come up until the plans are already submitted, how can the art be an integral part of the planning process? That's a little confusing to me. And I think that's a big part of when the Public Art Committee takes up revisiting the ordinance working really closely with the community development department staff to figure out when the best times in the process are there's no perfect solution because without building plans you don't really have a project but without a pro with yeah without yeah. with it once you have the building plans done how do you do the art and so trying to figure out where the chickens and the eggs all lay should be laying in the best possible way for the developer as well as for the um for the artist and everything. Do you get noticed ahead of time when they're doing a concept review though? The planning commission knows when they're coming up with a concept review. I do know when a concept, I know when a concept review is coming up because I read their agendas, but um, I don't get a special, hey, doing concept I was review. just wondering if, because Christine has talked about this a lot, about it being an integral part, and if, if we were notified that a concept review was coming up, and I don't know if Christine would want to take that on, but she could certainly be, be, you know. I, I'll comment. Um, Amber and Kathleen Wald and I spent um, some time, a uh, couple meetings, going over procedures so that um, the ducks would be in a row. And I'm pretty comfortable with what we came up with. Okay. And one of the things that Kathleen Wald added uh, to the planning commissioner's checklist is that uh, you know, there's a checklist that they have to check off as they accept uh, a planning or a whatever, whatever you're gonna, I, I don't know the right word for it, Amber, but there's a checklist and now on that checklist is that they have gone through the CAPA pro process. So I feel it's pretty early on that there are, there's not just that, but now, okay because of all that past stuff, we have some things in place to catch this mm -hmm. earlier than it's been caught okay. in the past. And Don't another, you think? I do, yeah. I do think so. And I do when, um, one of the things that Commissioner Golden really pushed for, and I think it's pretty brilliant, is when somebody comes in for a design review permit application, there's a notification on there that says your project could be potentially subject to, pub to public art. And then once they get further along in that process, if it becomes clear that they could be potentially um, a qualifying project, then they're given the um, hand, the guideline for developers. They sign something that says that they have received and understand it. it goes so, in the file. so that means they are notified before they submit the plans. When they walk okay. in the door. Okay, that's what, I, that's what my question yeah. was. Okay, thank you. And that's really crucial. Yeah. 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 
Okay. And that was Kathleen Wold's addition too, is to actually have the developers sign that they've received a copy of the development packet. So we've put some pretty tight things in place. And you know we're always looking to improve it and to tighten it, because every project is different. And with every project, we find out, oh, mm. now this. Oh, now that so it's great that it's flexible and that you know that we're all working together on it and um, I think it's good good stuff so thank you thank you um, and I have no questions on that tonight <laughs> so we can go on to updates we can go on to updates um, Michael and Greg Grant and um, Doug Lochner and I met over by the Lizard to um, talk about the vandalism that happened. It's been completely removed. Greg Grant's team did an incredible job. It turns out it wasn't um, horrendous to remove it. Uh, it was They were able to do the job. And then we talked about the um, penny application. And uh, Doug wants to go back to the drawing board and take a, a second look at how that might work out. And so we said, sure, and when you're ready, uh, let us know what you have in mind. So we don't think that's going to happen anytime in the next two, three months, because he has the museum gate project right, right. now on his plate, and he has an out of town project on his plate. But I imagine that in two or three months, he'll be ready to show us something, and we'll have a committee to approve public art meeting. Uh, and we'll take a look and ask questions and see what he has in mind and then make a decision and come back to you with the recommendation from the committee. And the, so that's the two issues that really came into play at that meeting in the park was A, the, mm -hmm. the roughness potentially of the pennies and vandalism, people chipping off the pennies, yeah. and also just the, the complexity of covering the entire lizard and the idea that Doug, I think, is running with and he, he got very excited about is maybe just doing a, a line, a curvy line on the lizard uh, that would almost be like stripes on the back of a yeah. lizard. Decorative right? pennies. Yeah, and that he would then use a, I guess it's sort of like a router, but oh, he'd, 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 dug, mm -hmm. he'd dig into the concrete mm. and set the pennies inside that. that. So awesome. yeah. that would still provide the rough surface of the concrete to prevent slipping by kids on that lizard when they're playing on it so I think Doug as an artist was very open to ideas it was a really powerful meeting with yeah, him it was a lot of fun and I think it's going to go yeah. forward shoot yeah. ideas back and forth it's great and it reminds me Michael that we also talked about the heat of the pennies there was concern uh, from even a council person had contacted me about the pennies getting very hot and that would also avoid that because there'd be you know uh, two surfaces some pennies some concrete so uh, he's going to mock up all different kinds of ways and I assume come to us with what he thinks is the most viable way of doing it. He's so thorough. He's so, uh, his attention to safety and detail, you know, this, this is a, a, a real wonderful person to work with on that end. So we have high hopes. Um, skate Park Wheel, Amber, how, how are we doing on that? Have we contacted Trim, uh, not Trimpin, um, the other one? Um, somebody say it. Um, Ted, Gall? Ted Gall. Ted Gall. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Ted. So my <laughs> recollection is that the Public Works Department was going to follow up on that with um, Mr. Gall. So I will check in with Greg and get okay. something out to you. Get it re repainted. It needs to be repainted. It's oh. getting to. It's yeah. one of the most um, photographic pieces of public art we have, and it, it's and I, looking kind of I think within orange. the last year, the f the horse at the Rotary Park at the entrance to Ojai was repainted. So. Mm. The public works would certainly have done that, so they would be. Isn't that rusted? I thought that was rusted just natural now. rusting, like the well, Picasso it was, in it Chicago. It was taken off and disappeared and came really? back looking fresh and new. Oh, so. really? That's news to me. Yeah, that's. Did you notice that from the pool? No, I noticed <laughs> that walking my pooch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On All right, the, the next one is uh, the Trimpen Arch, and that's also an update from Amber. What I know that you wrote to Mr. Trimpen. So I wrote to Mr. Trimpen, not Trumpen, my, excuse, my apologies for the typo. Um, I wrote to Mr. Trimpen in December of last year, and, and I followed up in January of this year, and we played phone tag once. And so I think at this point, He's indicated some interest, but not quite enough 
to get the project moving along. So I think at this point it would be wise to develop a couple of options, give him the opportunity to weigh, on, weigh in, and then bring them to the public um, art committee. So, so then is this something that James and you and I can talk about too because there is another option that I would put out to you then? Yeah, I think that would be a great idea. I okay. think it would be, I think so we'll it would put be this wise our, to um, we schedule okay. a meeting between either the public art committee chair or the full committee um, with James Vega, James Hahn, who's our local, who's our in-house technology magician, fabulous. and um, oh, potentially fabulous. myself to discuss options that could be okay. available. So Stuart? just let me know which one you prefer. W what's what's wrong with the trip? Oh yeah, background. I'm sorry for you new people. I just think you know you don't want to hear me go on and on. So yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I know yeah. you do. I know you do. But that'll change over time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> about the next five minutes, it'll yeah. change. Yeah. Maybe in the next five minutes. Um, the Trimpen Arch. Uh, you know what we're talking about in Libby Park. The Trimpen Arch is a sound arch, and uh, when you it's motion activated, when you walk under it it plays a series of notes that are somewhat discordant it's not um, a tune that you would recognize but it varies every time you walk on it. it's slightly different he programmed in a number of different pieces the mechanism that was used has been uh, repeatedly vandalized um, some people think that it's because the uh, players on the tennis courts are uh, disturbed by the sound. Some people think it's just vandals who just like to do what they do. Um, and so we're looking at a different way to motion activate it. Now it is timed to be off during prime tennis playing times. That was a huge controversy that came before the Arts Commission uh, to not have it. Go ahead, I'm just shaking my head in amazement. Well, yeah, don't steal my thunder here, Michael. No, no. <laughs> But he's correct. I mean, you do. You have to shake your head at it. Um, but, you know, public pressure can really get to you. And um, there, it was felt that there was a certain need to listen to what the tennis players were saying. So it was adjusted in time. And also, it's turned off, um, which I think we have to look at when it's turned off. For example, when Libby Bull has its performances, that's a prime time for it to be on up until they start doing the light thing yeah. then it should go off but the hundreds of people that walk under that arch mm -hmm. and it's already turned off now I know who's turning it off and we should have him at the meeting too I'll tell you who that is later because he knows everything there is to know about that arch it's somebody who volunteers and helps the city with all you know who I'm talking yeah. about yeah so we'll include him I'm writing his name down right here it's an awesome piece it's, it's an awesome. yeah so we want to get it working. It's uh, many people um, and some artists who've emailed me pretty consistently say, you know, that's a joke. You, there's no sound on the sounder. Yes. So we'll, we'll get it done. Any other questions about that from newbies? I just want, I don't know if you're familiar with Trimpen, but uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. I was just going to say for the public yeah. that it, he's yeah. an international sculptor, so he's highly regarded, and the Sounds piece is good. highly regarded, and we're very lucky to have it. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, Topa Mountain Fountain, I'm so thrilled to tell you that Michael and I went and paid a visit to um, Senior Moment, Senior Moment. Topa Mountain Winery. Uh, what, what, Larry, Larry, thank you, to Larry. <laughs> Thank you. And it, delightful to work with him. What did you think of the $15 Cabernet? Um, <laughs> Let's not go there. This is a public <laughs> meeting. Um, this was a this was a uh, public art committee meeting, so there was no uh, Cabernet. And uh, talked to the uh, Larry about the issue. The issue being that the way the fountain is designed, um, it comes out of a a spigot that is rather high up on the back wall and drops down into the basin. And uh, being an owner of a similar fountain at my home, I know what happens, and it was happening there. The water splashes and it just goes all over. So he had turned it off. So we met with him, and um, it was fun for me because I'm kind of like a fix it girl and came up with some ideas on what they might do. And he contacted our, I don't know if he contacted RTK Tile, the uh, artist who designed the fountain, he contacted somebody, and that's what they did. They came in and they put something in that spigot so that instead of the water coming down like a, like a, a stream of, 
oh gosh, I was going to say something I shouldn't say. A uh, stream of water. <laughs> um, it, it, it comes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it comes. <laughs> it comes down in a shower. <laughs> And it stays within the um, basin, and he has it on. He has it on a timer. Nice. Um, when I arrived, he had emailed me and said, you can come see it any time, and I went over there to see it. And he had just turned it off because it was like five minutes before 8 o'clock at night. There's a requirement for, ha for him to have it on a certain eight hours a day. And he's delightful, and he has it on. And um, next time I go, it won't be a public art committee meeting. I'll let you know about the Cabernet. <laughs> All right, that's the plaques. Well, I uh, had the temerity to ask <laughs> Marcy if she would undertake the arrangement of plaques. Mm -hmm. And she, I have to say, graciously and thankfully agreed to do just that. So plaques are now in the work in Marcy's capable hands. And I really appreciate you taking that on. And I just want to add to that that we thought there was not a plaque by the, and I had mentioned it at a meeting, so I want to correct it at the meeting, that there was no plaque for the Matillaha Poppy Fountain. And I ran into Greg Grant, and um, that afternoon he sent me a picture of the <laughs> Matillaha Poppy. Uh, you know, Greg Grant, is he, he just follows up. Oh, he's incredible. And he sent me a picture and said, it's there. Now, it is there, but it's like, uh, if I'm the fountain, it's over there. So it's on that wall, the, the, the business that used to be called Busy Babes. There's a pillar there, and that's where that plaque is. And so it's, it's a little. Didn't it used to be on the top of the wall? I thought it was, I too. It was, yeah, yeah, but I, it isn't. It never was. That's just, you know. I, <laughs> I don't know why we thought that. I thought it, too. Anyway, so we have that plaque. And what we're looking for now is to get the plaques up in Libby Park on the playground plaques and the plaque on the Topa Mountain Winery Fountain. And then we'll be working on plaques for um, uh, Cottages Among the Flowers when that comes to be. And uh, my, what am I skipping? I don't know. Who you know? Sea Fresh has fresh, never yeah. had a plaque on their oh. uh, paintings, the fish painting in the back. Notice that none of the um, interior artwork that was used to qualify for public art at the end None of that's plaqued either. Isn't that? Oh, isn't yes. That, thank you. That trio in the lobby. Yeah. That, the, the Pamela Grouse. Pamela Grouse. And there's then there's also a growl that's um, at the restaurant at, at Olivella, and neither of those are plaqued. All right. So, Marcy, we have to add those. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Amber. I could like yeah. over the top of my head. Thank you. Thank you. Marcy, you have anything on the archives? I threw that at Marcy to do, and she's come up with an incredible idea. Not that incredible, but thank you. I'm, I'm saying uh, au revoir to all of the, the binder system. It's really difficult to manage. And going to uh, get like a banker's box and use, you know, a box, file box, use red wells. And uh, there will be one red well per project. And the red well will be divided into file folders that will be different uh, categories of what you know, pertaining to each public. Yeah. My qu my question uh, is. Hanging file. Oh, what's a red file? Yeah. A red. Well, you'll know. <laughs> the hanging yeah. file. It's right? no. It's not yeah. a hanging so file. It's work. just uh, an accordion file. Mm -hmm. yeah. An accordion well, file. My question is, what is the benefit to keeping a paper copy of the archive? Oh, I can tell you that. Okay. <laughs> um, this is what's in the archive. Um, Archival photography, you know, the hard copy archival photography, the original site plan with the project on it, minutes from the CAPAMI, the Committee to Approve Public Art, that contains all correspondence, the accession number, um, anything that you want to go and reach in and pull out and see what happened. There's other things as well. The maintenance plan. Is it, now, that doesn't mean that some of the contract, that doesn't mean that some of those things would not be on Google Drive. But it, for me, we need at least one hard copy of that because of the, you know, like, uh, just let's take Lochner's. There's complete sets showing everything, you know, in, in on like a architect drawing of what he was going to do. And that is history. That's why it's an archival file. 
I don't know how you'd get that up on Google Drive in quite the same way as if you wanted to lay that out and see. Um, the RFP is in there. There's, there's a number of categories that the committee to approve public art manages. There should be a photograph and a copy of the plaque. And I'm working with Mar Marcy on identifying. There's quite a number of categories for every project. The, the bi biography of the artist, all of that. You know, I could go on. I, I would like to suggest that when you are archiving these, in that, that you also either scan, take photos, and put a lot of this up onto Google Drive. Because I've looking, I, I'm looking at our website, and um, you know, the, the public art information on our website is very mm -hmm. sparse. It disappeared. It right, was up <coughs> right, and there's nothing, but, but the information should be available yeah. electronically as well. Absolutely. All right. I think it, the there used to be a slideshow on the public art button oh. uh, that Linda had it going, um, and you could go into that slideshow and see the public art at the time that was, out, you know, Susan uh, Stinsmullen had done that photograph. Did I give that to you, the CD of that? At yes. the last meeting? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, what I'd like to do is um, uh, gather and organize the physical copies of everything. Once that's done yeah. and all of these different Scan. pieces are complete, yeah. then I'll work with Amber or whomever um, uh, to start the electronic to show me, files. Yeah, yeah, to show me what to Good do, point. to scan them and upload them or whatever. Beautiful. We, um, we as, at a staff level, have quite at least of recent projects have quite a bit of that material. So I was just ready, making a note to myself oh. and James to put some, to put as much of that stuff that we have this public record into the file for you to use. And then I can um, print out what I see there. And I won't come running in saying, you know, I've got this big gap. I need this document, that document. We always want to see you. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> and there are Aww. gaps. Hmm? And there are gaps. Okay, so I, th I think this is a, perhaps a work in progress. I think once we really develop this archival system and then start to duplicate it, if you will, electronically, we may discover in time that having it on the electronic cloud is all that's really needed. But we don't need to debate that today. Let's, let's get the, the archive system set up and full and complete and begin to work to included in the electronic yes, I do have a suggestion too when you get this box done I, I don't know where you want it to live but if you need a place to keep it where it's archival we could do that in the museum too yeah, yeah I think it would live with the public art chair it's something that I that book that I passed on to Marcy is something that I always am going to and putting my hands into which is why I, I really want a hard copy for at least the chair um, and if you know, staff has it archi uh, up on there. That's fabulous. We don't have to do a second box. I love it. But I do have an outstanding question. I don't know if this has been resolved, and that is you have a numbering system for the two-dimensional work. Do you want us to uh, get, you know, should our numbering system coordinate with that, or should it be completely different? We have to also give an accession number to each piece. The accession number we're using mm -hmm. in the it's different at the museum when we accession it. It come, we get a whole, five, you know, we're starting a whole accession list of numbers under the collection of the city. Okay. So, if it's not so going to physically be at the at the museum, so just do, it would we'll make sense. do our sense. own. Yeah, yeah. Because we think thought so. we would start each number with PA for public art, and then a number. I, I believe that there's already a list I of that so nature too. that already has an accession number established. Um, oh. It's on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll, well, when James and I go to load everything up into the drive, maybe just don't, oh. so you don't have to duplicate work. Right. Fabulous. Some of those already, mm -hmm. You have some of those numbers already created. I, I believe so. Okay, let's move on then, please. To all right, the, it's a budget uh, update is next, but I yeah, I don't think clock. we have to do it because I think we did it earlier, okay, Michael. Okay, then we're all set. Didn't we? Yeah, we yeah. did. All right, we'll move on to item G on the agenda, which is the Art Acquisitions Committee. Linda, do you have a report for us? Um, any sort? Nothing new except for that we did have the reception here at um, City Hall um, for the almonds. It was a really nice event and uh, the acquisitions that we made for the, from them 
are currently um, at the museum, and they w um, they also have a show here at the City Gallery, uh, and that will be up. When's the one at City Gallery coming down, Christine? I don't know off the top of my head, but oh well, no, I do. Wait a minute. It's, I think it's on my phone. I think it's May twentieth. I think so. Yeah. May 20th, mm -hmm. good. A month from now. Yeah, That's and the when one, the shows switch out. Yeah, uh -huh. and the one at the art center, or I mean art center, the one at the museum will be up till they change their show, so, right? Okay. I, I must compliment you, too, on having that reception for the artist. That was, I think, an innovation, was it not? Have we done that before? For no, we've done it. Before. Have we? Mm -hmm. We okay. haven't done it out, out there. But. Okay, well, it, it was a very nice event, and I think it's really appropriate that we honor the artists when, the, when they're having an exhibit here. Okay, we'll oh, move on. Yes. One more thing. One They're more having thing. a reception for the um, new show at the museum, and the Amans will be there on Saturday. Saturday also. from 5 to 7 at the museum. Right. And it's Ojai Studio Artists right. as well. Okay, we'll move on to public relations. Uh, Chris? Okay, so there's been, um, I've been working quite a bit on the, the website, because our website was very neglected. And um, I do feel like, as a public arts, we need to have a definite presence on the web. Uh, Linda and I met, and our um, James, who's the IT guy here at the city, made some recommendations on some tools that would help us uh, make our events calendar a lot more interactive. Um, I did also set up a, um, the artist registry was off the, this is huge. the website, I don't know why. Um, so I'm recreating it and I put a form on there and I'd like artists to put their information and also their uploading images. In one day, we've already gotten, well, you could look on the website, um, artsohi.org. Um, we've already gotten a number of people that have replied. Um, the only thing that I do think that the commission should decide is on the website, I do say um, that somebody needs to live in Ojai or the Valley to be on this list. We don't want people from Japan. Right. Um, how far, or work, like they have a studio or maybe they're a member of OVA, you know, or Ojai Studio Artists. So, um, What's the limit of the valley? What does the commission think? I, I don't know. Great question. Well, it's I think generally we've referred to the greater Ojai Valley, which right. includes Upper Ojai and uh, um, Miramonte, Miners Oaks, Oak Casita View. Springs, Oak View. Okay, Casita Springs. That's really that was, okay. our, our catchment basin, okay. if you will. Okay, well, that helps. Um, so we're, it's a work in progress. I really would like you know, the book that's being done to be on there to, or the news about it, um, the scholarships. There's just, we, we really need to take advantage of what we, what we have, the space. Um, and Stuart has uh, written a wonderful article about the acquisitions. It hasn't gone in the paper yet, but I do know that same week uh, with other things I've been involved with, that they also didn't get in the paper that weekend. So, you know, I, Stuart and I were talking, and there's never a guarantee. I mean, they, um, you know, if if you bat about 85% getting stuff in, I think we're doing good. And um, so hopefully it'll be in this week. Uh, and that's basically what's going on. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Arts Grant Committee, Christine, do you have anything? No to report, report on that? tonight. Okay. That's premature, I guess. And so as a result, we can move on to the gallery committee. And Chris, this is your baby. Yes, well, um, uh, the gallery <coughs> committee, um, Bobby and Linda, we have met and made some discussions. And um, we actually have a calendar, which was kind of created around the, um, the, um, the, the commission had committed to Oh, high studio artists for their student scholarships to have a show here, um, and that was before I was actually on the committee. So um, right now we have um, Richard and Wyatt Amond here, 
and then we will have the Ojai Studio Artists. And I actually talked to some of the mentors, and I know the reception's going to be at the museum, but I think it would be exciting to have a lot of their work here as well. Mm -hmm. And um, Diane Bennett is going to be here during the summer. She was an acquisition from the last year. So she's going to have a show here during the summer. And um, we are going to have an open show um, about Ojai uh, in the winter. Excellent so idea. Very nice. Great. Yeah. Well, could, could you be a little more specific when you say about Ojai, open show about Ojai? That can be up to the artist, uh, what Ojai means to them. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. nice. Cool. Yeah. That's interesting. Nice. Okay, uh, we're moving on, and we'll move now to the Arts Education Committee, and this is the Architecture Book and Bobby Balderman. Well, I am really excited because after, what, over a year of trying to gather photography, we have only two properties left to photograph. Woo! And Dawn Rosa did a beautiful job um, shooting, and, and she's such a sweetheart. You know, I, we're giving her a stipend, and there's no money... There's no more money than this stipend. And it seemed like every other day I'm emailing her, there's one more property, Dawn. <laughs> there's one more property, Dawn. And she just has been doing this so openly and willingly, and she's very excited about the project. So she's just got to, uh, she's now going to do Matillaha and Miners Oaks Elementary. And those are the only two, oh, I'm sorry, in Villanova, she's going to go over two sets, three. As far as the writing, um, I spoke with Craig. He's over a third through. He's, he's almost a halfway through on writing it. Oh, wow. And they will be done by June with writing it, so which cool. means this summer it goes to the artist, to Carlos Grasso, for production. Oh. And we, um, I mentioned earlier that I got revised estimates on printing for the book because now we're thinking it may be 88 pages instead of 80 and I want to make sure we're covered just in case that happens and I was surprised to see that actually the new estimate is not that much more than the old estimate as far as if we were to do 80 pages again so we're still stay, staying pretty much within what we thought it was going to cost and just hope that the city provides the money for printing because that's kind of basically what's going to be left. So uh, it's very exciting to see it all starting to happen and come together. And so I'm pleased And the, and the timing is fantastic. I mean, the, the, the amount of work that you and, and Craig and others have put in is, is really paying off because with this sort of progression now, it is conceivable that we could have the book in hand for Ojai Day. In October, wow. and that That'd would be, be great. superb, wow. right? As a kickoff and as a, a book release. No promises. <laughs> no promises, <laughs> but boy, well, that would be terrific. We could have a reception as a part of Ojai Day and really make a, a splash with the first of the Arts Commission art books. It's terrific. That's great to finish up that way. All right. Where staff, is the Where is the money going to go from the sale of the books? Have we back determined to the that? City. Back to the city. Goes back to the city? You bet. Doesn't go into the public archive? No, it <laughs> goes to the city, but then all along we have been saying we'd like it to go to the mentor program, but I realize there's a protocol to follow to, to be able to use that money for that. But that was what we've discussed all along. But we will make it clear to the city that the, the receipt from the sale of the books will go to the city with our recommendations of how it might be spent, right? So after, we, we hope it will be supplementing the Arts Commission One of our budget. programs, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, staff liaison report. Well, you have a new liaison. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't really have, I don't have very much for you guys today. Um, there's been, you know, lots of, lots of things going on in the Libby Bowl, which I have been remiss in sending to Commissioner Harmon. Um, we have Berlin coming in this weekend You've and um, the OHA Youth Opera coming up at next month. And everything else is just kind of trucking along. Okay. Question, Linda? Yes. I have a question for you, Amber. On uh, commission budget status you handed out, um, there are three um, entries f on the 4-13-2017 for these three students. Mm -hmm. And my understanding was they never showed up. So why are there debits there? 
Those are the three students that completed the program. I have oh. I received reports from those mentors um, okay. outlining the hours that they spent okay. and also their participation in the program. There were two who did not complete, okay. one who moved out of town and one who disappeared. Okay, thank you. That clears that up. Thank you, thank you. And uh, any commissioner comments at this point? Yes, Chris. Amber, I have a question. So um, we did recommend, um, uh, uh, oh gosh, my mind's going blank. Um, for the valuable Ojai person, Roger, sorry. <laughs> Lifetime Achievement Award. Lifetime Achievement. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a it's long day. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. Anyway, um, I was wondering if it would be appropriate for Stuart to talk to him um, that he was recommended so we could get background information. That's a terrific so a idea. So a press release could yeah. When it's yeah, I, I, I will I would call defer Roger to the chair. and know him that we've uh, we've recommended that he be the awardee and tell him that Stuart will then be contacted. Okay. Great. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, great. Terrific suggestion. Thank you. Any other commissioner comments? Bobby. Yes, I'm gonna do a commercial. <laughs> if I hand it and I will give you both of you one of these. Uh, each of you received one of my invitations. It's shameless. Show. It's shameless. <laughs> shameless, but, but acceptable. The thing that's shameless well, is my husband the did, awkward so. thing that happened, and that is that it was scheduled for Wednesday, the 17th of May, all along. And I went along with this program, and I get this last minute email that the only day available for the reception is the uh, 18th. So, of course, I agree without even looking at my calendar. Guess what? It's the next commission meeting. So, Oh. This doesn't mean you're off the hook from not coming, though. <laughs> if you notice, it's 5.30 to 7.30. So that means that I'm hoping all of you show up and come we by Ojai Community Bank <laughs> and at least have a quick... Well, I don't know if I should tell you to have wine before coming to the commission. No, we used not. to have wine all the time before the meetings when we had our receptions here. Yeah. Meetings went really well, too. And faster. Stop by and attend. I'd appreciate it. If you cannot make it for some reason... The show will be there from May 15th till June 30th. Can we have our meeting at the bank? <laughs> no. I don't think, so. no. I don't think that quite works. <laughs> I don't think so. Ah, oh, darn. It is worth saying, however, that the images that Christine has been posting are stunning. You mean it's Bobby? a Bobby, I mean. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> It is late. It is late, <laughs> yes. It's been a long day. No, the, the, the work is really beautiful, so it's, it's worth seeing. And I think that's all we have to say tonight, unless there are any other commissioner comments, in which case, ladies and gentlemen, oh, okay. and the public at large. Can I say welcome? Welcome. Yes. yes. Welcome yes. to James. And we're adjourned. All right. Thank awesome. you all. All right. Okay. Did you? Okay. Uh, I think um, you don't need to write that one. No, I had a late lunch. Susan's sister was in town, so we didn't sit down and eat lunch until 1, 1.30 something. That way. So I have one last thing and crackers yeah, for us. Did you give me this? This is kind of a strange thing. Did I tire yeah. out your ears? No, you really you you hit yourself beautifully. I, I think. I Thank know. you, Stuart. I think we're all going to make a motion I actually that you be honored. I hate those <laughs> things that they're all over. <laughs> yes, I think that I'm, the most boring so kind of art yeah, there is. I'm not, I'm not yes, crazy about it, but you know what I think we're going to discover? What? Is Do so I want this? Yes, because this one's going to be way more than he said. Oh, it's going to be well over $100,000. Oh, you know what this is? Yeah, it's ridiculous. This is Art 21. Susan's sister is a sculptor who's done any number of bronze full scale. It's a film program. Right. This is Barbara Hirsch's original. Five thousand. She said, "Oh, it's going to be three times that." She passed it on to Pamela, and Pamela passed it on to I don't know who, and eventually yes. and ended up in my hands. Yes. I thought somebody yes. else oh, might want it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's awesome. Awesome. Okay, I'll give it to Pam. I don't think it'll yeah. fly, but I had to be polite. I keep trying to get it to her, but I don't see her enough. You know, she's so busy okay. with all those grandbabies. And then the other thing was, um, I have Don to call you so you can come over. Really yeah, yes, that. yes. I'm a little intimidated by Google Drive because I've read really bad things about it. But if you're oh. telling me that, it won't interfere with my Mac mail in any way. No, no. Um, the other thing is, when you're doing that uh, roster, 